Pro Marsha, inshallah, to send us something. We don't know anything. Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim Kabisya Rabbani, we're asking his madad. We're going according to proper protocol. And he will ask for the madad from his Shaykh, Sultan al Awliya, continuing to the 40 grand Shaykhs to the Holy Prophet, والسلام, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is protocol. It is not just protocol for the sake of protocol, it's understanding your reality. It's understanding your reality. What is our reality? That nothing that is coming is directly coming to us. Nothing. We are saying we are the children of Adam alayhi salam. But we know we are not his children. We are his great, 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 great children, grandchildren. We don't come directly. If physically we're not coming directly, and Tariqat is teaching us that reality of how we are, where we are, and how we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the connection now, Allah has sent his prophets to connect us. He has sent the awliya Allah to connect us. He did not send it to us directly. Otherwise, what reason he has for sending the prophets? He could have just sent Quran to every one of us. If you are believing in this, believing is not just saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. They're teaching their kids. Yeah. Just believe, just believe. Squeeze yourself to believe it's going to happen. Believe, clap, clap, and believe, and then it's going to come back to life, right? It's not that. Belief is to take out the unbelief. Understand? If you don't take out the unbelief, that belief is going to be very trapped. It's going to be oppressed, it's going to be hidden. You have to take out the unbelief. Then the belief is going to be more free. You have to take out the ilahs. Then the Allah, you believe properly, it's going to be there. We're not, in reality, you're not taking out anything that is real. It's not real. It's not as if there's ilas and there's Allah and then you take out the ilas and Allah is left. No. There's la ilah. There's no ilah. We understand there is no ilah. So now we have to say la to the ilahs first because that ilah, ourselves, because man, if you say what is really existing, they say we don't know, but we know that we exist. At least I can say that I exist. Anything else? I don't know. Teaching again, I am the center of all things. No, it's not. So you take out those unbelief. Then you'll be left with the belief. Then you're going to understand how that belief, in order for the unbelief, wrong belief systems, wrong ideas to come out, First, you have to have the guide who is going to guide you to what is right and wrong. Otherwise, you don't know what is right and wrong. You think everything is the same. There's no difference. There is a difference. There's a very big difference. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Haq and Batil, they are very distinct. There's no confusion in that. So what is making us to be confused about what is haq and batil? Our ego. Shaitan. It's dunya. Our desires. So tariqat will make us to understand what are the friends of unbelief. What are the support systems that makes you to believe the wrong things? And say don't believe through your ego. Wrong. But it feels really right. I studied others, but who is bringing you that message? The prophets bringing it? No, it's not. 
is the dunya is bringing you that message. It is your anger that is bringing you that message. It is your ego that is bringing you that message. Don't trust that message. Don't trust the messenger. Take out that messenger. So now, we have to learn how to distrust first. Distrust. Things that you used to think, this is normal, this is my identity, this is my reality. First you have to distrust. It's like you're so buddy buddies with shaitan now, suddenly you realize, oh, shaitan is my enemy. But he was so good to me, blah, 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 shaitan. Then you have to work yourself. You have to understand, you have to sit and you have to think how this one is my enemy. Not to just go life through life, just, uh, just like that, nothing, it's okay. No, you have to sit and you have to think and you have to watch very carefully. You have to take, the, take it out very carefully. This is tarikat. It is work. It is work. It is very delicate work. It is very hard work. It is very difficult work. As the Holy Prophet he said to us, Salam is saying, hidden shirk, it is more difficult for you to see, for you to know what is the hidden shirk. It is more difficult to see. It is impossible to see, he's saying. It is more difficult to see than for you to be able to see a black ant on a black rock on the blackest part of the night. You understand? You go out night time. You see. You cannot see nothing. Forget about an ant. You won't even be able to see the dog that is in front of you, the cow that is in front of you. Because it's completely black now. Now, how are you going to know what is? You cannot trust your ego to tell you this is hidden shirik, this is not. You have to hold on to your guide. Because your understanding of Allah now is according to your ego, it is wrong. Your understanding of Allah now is according to your ego and guided by shaitan according to this world, according to what the world is saying, what is Allah, it is wrong. Your understanding of the prophet according to your ego, it is wrong. Your understanding of the shaykh according to your ego, it is wrong. Now, who doesn't need guidance in this black night to take out the things that is going to be harmful to you? Who doesn't need guidance? Huh? We grew up, spent so much time trusting the enemies. Now we say, this is awliya Allah, this is your shay. Well, how do I know? How do you know this? You're trusting yourself that those people who are having that kind of uh, uh, arrogance, uh, definitely they're not ready for tariqah. They're not. Because you're still believing in yourself. Huh? You're still believing in the existence of yourself. Huh? You still believe that you are something. Huh? Empty the cup. This is all I'm saying. This whole words that I'm saying is what Shah Fandi and the Awliya Allah are saying. When you come to their presence, empty your cup. Remove it. Don't trust what is inside. You sit in the sohbet. You understand. You are in a protected environment. As much as you can absorb, you're going to take. Now you're going to take that and you're going to put it in your life. You need to practice that. Now, you have to stop trusting in yourself and start trusting in your guide. Even if it is something that doesn't make sense to you, oh, it doesn't make sense, I did this. Learn how to shut that down. Because even objectively, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That one is saying, oh, it is not, it is me, I'm the one who's doing this. But can you say, are you able to just keep quiet? Are you able to have the power to just say to your just shut up. I don't want to hear you. I want to hear other things, what they talk about, a little bit. I've been listening to you for 20, 30, 40 years. Just be quiet, for instance. No, we cannot keep it quiet, no. That is showing how much slave we are to them and why we have to trust them. So now you have to build up the trust. Build up the trust, you have to distrust all of us. We have to now unlearn before we start learning. 
You have to unlearn. This is the difficult part. There is a part that the Naqshbandi sheikhs, they are number one with. That's why so many are running away, especially from this Jamaat, because you have to unlearn. For you to learn, you have to unlearn. For you to get filled up, you have to empty the cup. Sometimes they are saying, break the cup, it's no good. We give you a new cup, no problem. This is the difficult part. But is this a choice? It is not. When we are buried underground, the first question the angels are going to ask, who is your Lord? The questions are so heavy, it's so dangerous. If it's something that is so heavy and so dangerous, why the Prophet ﷺ is stressing on that? Talking about how that whole situation now is very important. It's so dangerous that now the Imam who buries you has to sit and has to give you tutorial. To say, look, this is going to happen. The question is this, answer this. It's not so easy, otherwise, why there need to be a question? Why it needs to be a question? We are not at that level of say, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anh, when the angel came to him and he says, Who is your Lord? And he says, Who is my Lord? Come closer, I will say it to you. I cannot hear what you're saying. Say, Who is your Lord? Say, Come closer. The angel was very shocked. Never before someone says, I can't hear you and I have to come closer to you. He came close, Hazrat Umar got up and he punched the angel, uh, Munkar and Nakir. He punched them in the eye and he says, how dare you question me, who my Lord is. I live my whole life serving my Lord. How dare you question me. But Lord is the one that you serve. It is not a name. It is not a name of a deity that you have been taught or you discover by yourself or your parents teach you uh, the name is Allah and you have to say Allah. It means who have you been serving? So many they will fail with that first question because they will say what is in their heart and what is in their heart is themselves, number one. Themselves. Because they're busy with themselves, thinking about themselves, 24 hours, serving themselves. So they are the Lord. And when the angel asks, who is your Lord? Majority, they are going to say, I am my Lord. I am the Lord. Just like the Firaons, they're saying what? Ana Rabbu Kumala. I am your highest Lord. Ahir Zaman, Muslims especially. They kick out, now, anyone in authority, they kick out the Imams, they kick out the Shaykhs, they kick out the Evliya. And they're serving only themselves. Who are you serving? Are you living and serving Islam? No. Yourself. Fail. Who is your prophet? Prophet, yourself. Who is your nation? Nation of me. This is what they're teaching us anyway, teaching our children. New style, they're saying, no, in Islam it's not about individuals. It's about Allah. Since when? Your Wahhabi Islam is like this, yes. Since when? Tonight, we're celebrating the anniversary of the Battle of Badr. If it's not for these 313 individuals, there is no Islam today. No Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ spent the whole night before the battle begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him victory. He didn't say, well, I'm a prophet. My Allah is my Allah. I have so much power. Definitely I'm going to win. Like so many Muslims. So sure of their faith. Well, I pray, I do all these things. Of course I'm going to go to Jannah. So you're not understanding the power of Allah. You're not understanding now. Also the danger and the power of the enemies of mankind. 
uh, shaitan made a promise in divine presence, say, I will bring them to hellfire. Three hundred and thirteen individuals that we cannot come close to. We should go and we should kiss the plains of Badr. That so many of them they shed their blood for us, not for themselves. What do they win from this dunya? That the order of fasting was just given to them. They never fasted too. In the hottest part of the year, now they have to fight. Understand how difficult it is? There is, there is no uh, open karamat like that. They are men, flesh and blood like us, that they have to sit, they have to suffer too. So we need to understand what is unbelief, to take that out. What parts of this unbelief, wrong things, thinking me, I, me, I'm the one who's doing it. Do you know, if someone is saying I'm the one who's doing it, according to a level of faith, or a higher level of faith, you're already committing a hidden shirk. We cannot take a breath in without Allah's permission. We cannot take a breath out without Allah's permission. It is so easy for us to think this is just theory right now. But look, you just have to look. Thousands are in the hospitals and they have to be hooked up to machines. Now they understand that we don't have any power even to... <sighs> it is not us. What do you think it is? Just because we're awake, we can do things, we are the ones who's doing it. What happens when you sleep? Who controls your breathing then? You? You have to be tough to your ego. You have to be tough to yourself. So the whole point also is for a man to understand that he is a servant. He is a weak servant. Weak servant. Physically. We are not the children of Adam yet. We are not the children of Safiullah yet. The first one, the clean one. That is our maqam. We may reach that. If we get rid of the dirt, we may reach there. But if we don't get rid of the dirt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? Don't you see? We created you from a drop of dirty water. And now you're declaring war to me? Allah is saying Surah Yasin, we created you from a drop of dirty water and now you declare an open enemy to us? We are understanding our weakness. Once you understand your weakness, and you understand how great Allah is, and you understand the blessings and the power and the energy that is giving to you as a servant, that servant becomes a sultan. He is a sultan to his ego first. He is a sultan to his world, to his shaitan. He is a ruler. Now he rules. Now when he's able to rule that, Allah has countless worlds for us to rule because we have been created to represent him. First, rule yourself. Especially in this way. This way is for rulers. But you cannot rule until you understand how weak a servant you are. Because if you think that you are not, you are only going to take energy from your own ego. One day it's going to finish you. It's going to, it's going to be done. But if you are taking the energy, if you are taking the support from the holy ones, it is never ending. Because they are taking their support from Hayul Qayyum. You are not taking your support from Shaitan. He has a limit. Our ego has a limit. We are trying to be nothing. If you think you are something, your ego will still fool you. Words of Sultan al -Awliya. 
Ah, how are you going to be nothing now? Just by saying, I'm nothing. Now you have to be trained. Now you have to get knocked wall to wall. Now you have to get washed up. Because now you've got to learn how to empty that cup. So are you saying, how can we make that into a reality? You work. Start trusting in your guide more. Put that out. You enter into the military. First they make you to become nothing. But from that nothingness, you become something. Then you can become something, you can become something, you can become something. You, according to how much now, you reach to another level, you say, I am nothing. Meaning, you don't declare that, oh, why I have to go through this test, I am someone already. No, you say, I don't know, I have to study, I have to learn. That time, you're learning because you say, I'm putting aside what my position is, what my knowledge is, I'm going to learn this new thing, then they make you to become something. The more you say you are nothing, more you're going to be something. We are trying to be nothing. We are trying to become zero. Zero. Allah is one. With one, without zero, we may become ten. Still, as much as you say I'm nothing, you make another zero, you'll become a hundred. You say, I'm nothing. As much zero as you can put, you rise higher and higher. You don't lose with more zeros that you're going to put. Today's people, they say, I'm 10, I'm 100. Who is going to say, I'm nothing? So easy for people, Sufi way, oh, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. But if the Sheikh is going to test you a little bit, say, eh, why are you doing this? This is not tariqat. It's supposed to be love. Love, 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 love. Yeah. So you still think love is something, huh? Then that kind of tariqat you belong to. You still don't understand the love is like that moth that goes to the flame and he burns himself and becomes nothing, huh? You don't? What can we do? This is our way. This is the way of Sahib al Saif. And this month, this month is teaching us how to be nothing. This month is teaching us how mankind is saying, when I eat and I drink, I live, I become alive. Like Sultan al is saying, what kind of foolishness? Take the dead man and give him food and drink. See if he's going to wake up or not. Oh... Because through all logic now, if you don't eat and you don't drink, you die. Hmm? For almost 1,500 years, especially the West, they look down and everything that Islam is doing. So why fasting? It's just so wrong thing, fasting. It's so unhealthy, da da da. They know it is healthy, but they're hiding it because they don't want to praise Islam. You understand? It's come to a point now because of that social media fitna also. Sometimes there's good coming out. Now people are saying, oh, there's so much benefits. Now everything is open. Now we have so many non-Muslims fasting in the month of Ramadan because they say, this is good for me in so many ways. It's good for me in my health. And they only discover just a little bit of the benefits. Which means that whatever Allah is saying for us to do, it benefits us in so many ways. Whatever He says don't do, it harms us in so many ways. Ah, it's okay, a little bit of drink here and there. Yeah. Now they're saying even a little bit of drink, which is liquor, which is haram. Even a little bit of smoking, which is haram. Anything that is haram, it harms you. Now, the scientists are coming out to say, even a little bit of drink and smoking is causing you to become more sick, especially causing you to get... Uh, more exposed to cancer. There is no such thing as only a little thing and it's harmless. No, it's not. Especially the pork now. It's harmful. How are you going to believe that? 
How are you going to believe that? Do you need to eat pork and drink wine and smoke up? Oh, this is harmful to in order to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Huh? No. Done. You use your intelligence, right? Good. So your intelligence will tell you if something is trustable or not. You don't need to go through it. Because the little bit that you go through, you understand, oh, it's a sign. Now a little bit that you go through, you understand. I cannot trust myself. You understand. This is not coming from me. Because everything is coming from Allah. Everything is coming from Allah. Tariqat is showing us how it's coming from Allah. How it's coming. Otherwise, we have a very big problem because everyone is saying, I am Lord. Don't you see? <sighs> I'm breathing. I'm getting up and down. It's me. No one else is controlling. It's easy for you to say that. What happens when you are sick? What happens when you die? Who is controlling that? You're saying you are the highest. Well, don't die. You control your life. It is all because of you. Don't die. You cannot. Even those ones say we don't believe in a creator, they will die. Like what Shaykh Andy is saying to those ones who don't believe in Allah, they don't believe in a creator, they don't believe in shariat, they don't believe in divine law that, that is guiding everything in creation. Divine law is just not just mankind. There is a law to the angels, there's a law to creation, there's a law to the animals, everything has a law. Ask science. Everything there is a law. You don't want to follow that law. And what's going to happen? Go find another uh, planet where Allah is not ruling. We are weak servants. Once we understand this reality, at that time, we understand a little bit more how great our Lord is. Hmm. We understand a little bit more. Now, everything that is coming, it is coming from Him. Everything that is coming, it is coming through Him, from Him, through the Prophet ﷺ. Now, there has to be those ones in between He's going to give. Now you're going to start to understand. Once you make that to be strong in you, you start seeing with the eye of your heart. And you're going to be able to find support anywhere that you go. He may tell you also, it's okay, now you go, you run. May Allah forgive me, inshallah. May Allah forgive all of us. Make us to understand and to live that understanding. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, Sultan Ali and Sahib al Sayyid. Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This much is enough, inshallah. It's getting a little bit late. We are still need to pray Isha and Taraweeh. So we will speak again inshallah tomorrow if Allah gives us life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Al Fatiha.